it was just another day. The shrine maiden graced us with their presence from dawn till dusk, and now was the time for her reprieve. But what she didn't tell people was what she was after the dark had settled. The crowd roared. The hallway was its familiar dull hues. As soon as she entered the stadium, there was merely silence. She cusped the baton firmly, embracing its girth. With it, she raised her hands in the air. She let loose words. Let there be hyper blue. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, YouTube. It's your Slime King, the Jima Man, and welcome to another video. Yaimiko lives a secret, hidden life. She's actually the maestro of Hyperbloom, and today, let me tell you why. First off, let's get this out of the way. In order to fully realize this role in Hyperbloom teams, she is running a Triple EM Thundering Fury build. Gilded Dreams may also be an option, provided you have it. What makes this so good? With Yaimiko is her ability to balance almost all stats despite running full elemental mastery. She has a crit rate ascension, and she has access to a crit damage weapon easily in the Wid Sith. You'd still end up with a decent crit ratio. And the cherry on top of all of this is her A4 passive that allows her to skinny dip under the vast oceans of elemental mastery, not only increasing her damage percent on her skill, but also increasing her hyper blooms and aggravates in the process. And what you end up with is a bizarre build that before Denjo came along, had no right to exist. Yaimiko's E can hit bloom cores as they have a small AoE ring around them, so if the core spawns next to the enemy, the Sakura Totem will always hit that core along with it. However, this is still subject to either the RNG of the targeting or the movement of the enemy. Now don't get me wrong, these Yaimiko teams are by no means the best. However, it represents a different playstyle that works surprisingly well and is well adept in clearing all of Abyss while being too fun at the same time. Now, let's look at teams before I explain just exactly how and why these teams function in the first place. There are slight variations of teams and rotations you can run for the Maestro of Hyper Bloom, but in my opinion, there is one that, synergistically at least, is the best. So, let's get into that last. The first variation is by using Yai as an on-field driver to continuously proc Hyper Blooms and some aggravates along the way. You'd pair her with either Sincho or Ye Lan, along with Denjo MC and an Anemo unit or Fischl. In essence, in this team, Yai Miko is acting as a driver similar to how Sucrose would enable Hyper Bloom teams. If you choose to run an Anemo unit, it works, and surprisingly well given the fact that this is a triple EM Yai we are talking about. But at this point, why not just use Sucrose? The rotations would be very similar to how Sucrose Hyper Bloom teams work, but instead of Sucrose, it's just Yai. It also ends up eliminating the RNG aspect of triggering Hyper Blooms. But instead, what ended up being the bare option was a more quick swap oriented team centering around Yai Miko and Tignari. Wait, 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 in my last video, I talked about how you should never run Tignari with a second Denjo unit. In this team, you'd run Kokomi, Yai, Tignari, and Denjo MC. In theory, this team is just a haphazard mess that doesn't really know what it wants as there are two conflicting reactions in Quicken and Bloom that eats each other up, therefore not maximizing their own potential. In order to understand this, let's look at the rotation of this team. Yaimiko starts off with right here, right now, emerge. Tignati uses his E, switch to Denjo MC to burst, catching particles from Tignati's E, then she uses her skill. During this time, some aggravates and some spreads will occur. 
Switch to Kokomi to drop the jellyfish and the bloom portion of the rotation finally begins. Switch to Tignari to burst, which if all of it hits one enemy, will almost always guarantee 3 spread charge attacks on an enemy right after. Then switch to Yaimika to cast N1, N1, N1 to proc hyper blooms. The reason for this is that due to the nature of how the totem's targeting works, it is not a reliable way to keep proccing hyper blooms and as such, this added into the rotation guarantees you will be proccing the leftover cores. Then switch to Kokomi to burst, and if you have C2 Denjo MC, you'd have around 2-3 seconds left of her burst, allowing Kokomi to do 1 and 1 to charge attack to proc some additional blooms, and then switch to Yai for burst. And the rotation simply repeats itself. After understanding the rotation, it now makes sense how it works. Aggravates and spreads will occur at various points of the rotation, and you'd proc blooms every now and then. It's important to note that you don't want to continuously proc blooms, as once it gets past 6 scores, the earliest one will explode. Add in that only 2 instances of Viper Bloom can hit one enemy, and it ends up actually being beneficial that Tignari during his rotation completely eliminates proccing blooms. You essentially stagger between Hyper Blooms, Aggravates, and Spreads instead of a concomitant vomit of reactions. However, the real upside of this team is the smoothness of its rotations. It seamlessly weaves into the next rotation without the need to battery anything or anybody. Every cooldown lines up that by the time you switch to the next character, their burst or skill is ready again. In order for this to work though, Kokomi is running a Hakushin ring that gives damage percent to Yai and paired with an ER Sans allows her to burst off cooldown reliably. Tignari has Elegy, which gives him all the ER he needs to burst off cooldown, especially with DMC and a Fab Sword on the team. And Yai? Well, if you don't have Burst, she simply does her triple E while weaving in N1s to proc Hyper Blooms. And as a byproduct of all of this, Tignari gives EM, Denjo MC gives EM, and the Denjo Resonance also gives EM, furthering strengthening the reactions of this team. It's such a good rotation that it feels like their cooldowns were made exactly for this team composition. Alright, but is it a good team though? Obviously, it's not the best team in the game. It has glaring weaknesses, especially in AoE, and it's not even the best in single target DPS. But the synergy is there, and despite its flaws, it can still competently clear most of Abysses. It's a team that lacks grouping and requires knowledge of enemy aggro to have decent clear times. It won't really outpace any actual good single target DPS team. However, its synergy is definitely something that cannot be ignored. Tignati's Taunt allows most stationary enemies to stay in that one spot where the Jellyfish, Lantern Lamp, and Sakura Totems intersect, allowing all the Hyper Blooms to proc and hit. Its cooldowns line up perfectly, however once enemies actually start moving at an unpredictable pace even with the taunt, that's where this comp starts to become horrible to play. Enemies will move too far away from the cores, and Yai's turrets won't proc them, getting staggered during a Yai Miko E, Tignari charge attack, or Kokomi E cast greatly messes up the timings of the rotations. But it cannot be denied, Yaimiko as the maestro of Hyper Blooms in this team is just too fun to ignore. To be honest, that is what I live for. What do you think about Triple EMI in Hyper Bloom teams? Tell me down in the comments below or barrier command me over at twitch.tv slash man, where I stream Genshin almost every day. Come join the Slime Kingdom Discord where I feed you slime condensate every day. This is our parting. Farewell.